Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, Dr. Gail. How are you today? Good. How are you doing, Terry? Good, good. I'm I'm at home. Where are you? I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. Oh. In in a hotel. In a in a mom and pop hotel. It's a great hotel. I mean, this is nice. Um, I have a view, really green view, which I was talking about. You were just talking about behind the scenes how I have missed so much green by being on the West Coast. Yeah. So green here is just beautiful, the greenery. So yeah, I'm in a hotel yeah. with my dog and my cat. My cat, dog is sleeping behind the computer, and my cat thinks I'm leaving, so she's hiding under the bed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you know, I always miss that when I travel, if I'm someplace that's really brown. I, I see the beauty in it right. and the different hues, and I can feel the energy of it, and it's really amazing. But I, I grew up in the green. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I didn't realize how much I missed it until I'm coming back seeing it. Because you're yeah. right, there's energy in all the other things, but I just didn't realize. I mean, it is just so green. Everything's so green. And water. I'm seeing so much more water, rivers yeah. and lakes and things like that, which um, coming across the U.S., I didn't see much of that until I was heading over to the east side. Yeah, we forget how much of that is in the middle of the country, <laughs> don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. On the, just on the west and the, and the east coast. That's all. That's the water <laughs> right there. Well, welcome everybody. I'm Terry at Holding Your Space. And obviously this is Dr. Gail, Skywalking the Moon and um, from Asheville. And um, it's it's so nice to be here and thank you all for being here today. Um, and it's been fun watching you travel this time. <laughs> I've got to say, I enjoy it. I The last time you traveled, I remember watching you and I was like, oh, that poor thing, you know, there were things happening and the animals and everything. And Oh my time. gosh, you know, hitting the deer was, um, <laughs> was a big thing, but I met the best people in um, Iowa and Kansas and you know, met the nicest people there, which I was meant to meet and yeah. uh, so and um but <laughs> it was <laughs> such an ordeal to deal with when you um you I went from I think I hit the deer in Missouri and I the, the person had to take me to Iowa to get a taxi and a taxi had to take me to Kansas to get a rental car. So <laughs> it was like an all day I mean I was in the middle of nowhere when I hit that deer but um so I haven't faced that this time. I haven't faced any kind of incident like that. It's just, you know, going through time zones and things like that just, you know, changes your dog's poop habits, which most people don't think about. Like, I'm like, yeah. well, why is my dog going to the bathroom? And, and, and she, because she's regular and they're going, and they're looking at my watch and going, oh, yeah, it's four o'clock in the morning on the West Coast. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, yeah. what, what happened to her? So. Um, it is so different, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's a lot of things you have to think about, and um, yeah, kind of stuff. So, I'm gonna change this so I'm not like a tall I don't, white. I don't know that people <laughs> really know much about Asheville as much as they do the other places, but Asheville is uh, has become the metaphysical place on the East Coast, and it's become pretty well known um, about being the center, metaphysical center on the East Coast. And I don't know if a lot of people know that because we always think about Mount Shasta, Sedona and um, things like that. But um, Asheville is also coming on up. And, and I think it's already been named as the metaphysical place um, on the East Coast a few years ago. Interesting. It's we went there years and years ago and went to the Vanderbilt mansion oh. and the mountains were beautiful there. Um, I think the Appalachian Trail gets right by there, didn't it? Right. Yes. Yeah. And um and it was stunning and it felt so good like that. Sometimes you visit a place and you're like, I could live here, no problem. Mm -hmm. I could live here, and that that was one of them. Yeah, Asheville. yeah, yeah. And, and also, you know, um, um, think um, realizing about the Native Americans, the Cherokees, and um, we had talked about that. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Yeah, I'd love to talk about that. I love that energy. Yeah. The, um, Native Americans, uh, and I had seen a video um, probably a year ago about them, the Cherokee, the North Carolina Cherokee um, Native Americans have in three generations have gone from like rags to riches. They've gone from being in poverty 
to now the ones that are, um, well, teenagers now, when they get turned 18, um, they earn or get $500,000 and it'll be broken up when they turn 18. And then another couple of years, I think when they're 23, anyway, it'll be broken up, but they're the first generation that they're going to have that have, do not have to earn an income. They can become artists. They can go to college. They can do whatever they want. They don't have to just get out of school and have to go earn income, which is our future is what I was being told as I was coming across the U S is they are our, um, um, what do you call it? Our example for what our future is and what it can be is that they did it with the casinos, with the gambling, and they all joined in and they all get a piece of the earnings from that. And our future, I've never understood how, and I've never understood how we were going to be able to do that because we're, when I'm in 5D working, we don't earn our income. There's no money motivations. There's nothing like that. Right. And that is our future. And they are the way we're going to get there. We're, they're showing me that we're all going to have small communities that are going to be self-sufficient and that eventually we will have enough money that we're not having to go out there and um, earn that kind of income and we can do whatever we want. And I just never saw how we were going to get there. But then they were showing me they are our example. And I think there's another tribe down in Georgia. I don't know the names of them, but they have always done the same thing. So the people, so as I said, they, it's a rags to riches. And that's what we, that is our model. That's the word I'm looking for. They are our model for our future, that we need to be looking at that. And that's how we can have communities and communities grow and more communities um, develop this self-sufficient um, living. And then eventually it'll be the whole world. So um, I, I thought that was big revelation on that. Now, the North Carolina Cherokees have already developed that. They're helping their sister tribe, which is in, um, I think it's Oklahoma, their sister tribe. And so they're just now beginning to do the same. So that's yeah. Our, yeah, that's our future. We need to look at that, how they've done that. You know, um, it makes so much sense and it feels so right. Like, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm getting major major signs coming in but yeah it feels so right because when you do um like meditate or you go in in your dreams or your visioning whatever you're doing um you can tell that you're not i mean you you're working but you're not working for money exactly you're working for the community right yeah i remember um years ago going to tulum and they have an arche archaeological site there a pyramid and um, a gentleman taking my girlfriend and I through it and and pointing, he was like a professor, you know, he's about 70 and he's climbing up and down this thing and um, <laughs> telling us all about it. But he said that they would work for six months and like either uh, farming or maybe they were fisher people or artists. And then six months of the year, they would come in to the, to the, um, the the area where everybody is like where the nobility was and whatnot and work there and and so they had their own homes and their own community there but they'd work for the whole community that's exactly yeah. what they're doing that all yeah. community works together yeah but anyway yeah. we forgot to talk about and say hi to people <laughs> i know it i know it i was gonna do that so i want to say hi to white dragon hello Susie. thank you for being here um, Annie Bear Seven Feather is here today. Good morning, beautiful. Fogo Pogo, Deep Al Albuquerque. Ginger Sky, Sally. Hello, beautiful. Ginger Sky again. Tina Mick, how you doing? Um, gosh, it's so nice to see everybody. So Ooh. in Dream Journey One, um, Spirit Detective, hi. Um, yeah, it's so nice to see everybody here. Um, Trying to see everybody. Diana's here, oil painter, the sun catcher, Millie de la Prada. Hello. And um, I think I saw Rossi earlier, Janet, Mary Lara is here, uh, Lori Hensberger. Hello, Lori. And um, let's see, 
still going through. If I miss somebody, that's well, there's, me. There's 48 people in the chat right now, Terry. So. Oh, sorry, everybody. So I'm just going to say hi. <laughs> hi, everybody. Yes. Hey, hey, how are you? <laughs> Um, well, I love that we're talking about that. And I, I, I did go and look up the Cheyenne in that area. The, the, um, the Cherokee. Cherokee, sorry. Cherokee. Yeah. 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 And um, uh, Kim, yeah, a lot of their a lot of their money does come from the casinos. Right. They are um, all, they are spreading out from the casinos. That's how they started. Um, they're going into like these buckies that you're seeing. Um, they're also the ones that are buying those and um, they're doing all sorts of things with their money, but the casinos is how they did start. That's not necessarily how we're all going to develop our own way, but that's how they did it. And that's our example of how it can be done and how they all have worked together as a community and they have all shared the money. That's yeah. the big part. They've come together as a community and they've all shared the money. And, um, and so that's how they pulled themselves out. And it's just amazing how, we're always thinking about keep our money to ourselves. Oh, I've got to keep that. I don't want to give it away. Yeah, and we stuff. hold on so tight. Right. I mean, the more money you have, a lot of times, the more you worry about money. Exactly, exactly. And so, yeah. and they've done the opposite. You know, they've done, they've just shared it. It's not the top person who has all the money. Now they do have, they did say they do have, still have three classes, but then even their lower class still has money, you know, in, in decisions. So they can, they get paid every six months. They get money. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I've got a friend in California and her uh, tribe has a casino and now they have also, they make olive oil, they have a vineyard, they have hotels, they, they do a lot. Right. And, and it's a very small, their tribe is very small. And so, um, but it's somehow or another, they give money to all the tribes around them. Yeah. And so, that's what um, these, these Cherokees here, are helping their, as I said, their sister ones in Oklahoma now and showing them how to um, do it, how to um, get started or yeah. to get where they're at. But they are, as I said, um, this third, it took them three generations to do this, to be going from poverty to um, self-sufficient. And um, in the next generation, they'll be um, not even self-sufficient. They'll be rich. Wow. Well, we all should be rich. Exactly. I mean, you know, and we all are rich in one sense. Right. But it it is a weird premise that the more money that we get, the more we worry about it. Yes. And count it. And um and often I don't know about you guys, but when I travel, <clears throat> there are so many times that I see a street person and and their light shining and you can tell they're an angel. And you can tell they're just, you know, they're having fun. They're enjoying themselves. And then you see somebody at a really nice hotel and they're like so worried about everything. And you're like, wow, that guy's a lot more fun. Yeah, so. actually, I had that when I was in chiropractic school, I was going to um, school to find a few different type of people for all the country. And I remember this one girl was taking her time going through school. Um, that was a good friend of mine. And I asked her, why are you not just barreling through? And she's going well, I decided I'm going to have my children around in school, so I'm just going to take my time. <laughs> it was just amazing, a different, just my attitude, because me, I'm, I'm like tunnel vision. Let me get through the school. Let me get it done. Let yeah. me get it out there. And, and, and she wasn't like that at all. And I had never met anybody, um, you know, not in a, um, I guess, a second kind of career situation that was just going to take their time. But they just weren't so focused just to get through it. It was and I, 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 I think about her all the time, how she kind of taught me um, to think differently like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is a lot different. Karen says first nations people can show us how to evaluate our spirituality to balance our technology. Oh yeah. I mean, they've always been, I think they've always been ahead of us. They've been ahead of us spiritually and that community. Um, yeah. They're, they're just, yeah, they're they're definitely ahead of us. Yeah, yeah, they really are. Um, and I like that. Um, I like this model a lot because I feel like really AI. I think that that's a lot of what that's meant to do to right. free up everything so that there is value for everyone right. and everyone is valued. But because um, we're all we're all the same, aren't we? We don't have to have 
you know, what really gets me is when you're walking into a stadium or, or wherever, an airport, and there's one line for people that spent more money and another <laughs> line for everybody else. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not fair, man. That's just not fair, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, go, going out to the West Coast, you know, I got rid of everything. I got rid of all my furniture and everything. Nice. And that was that was another lesson in itself was getting rid of everything that you you're tied to and realizing how you are tied to your stuff. And um, so that was a, that was a, that was good for me, because now even when I'm looking at stuff, I'm going, you really don't need it. I mean, you're just going to, you know, if you, if you want if I want to be tied down into one spot, uh, I'm not I'm not going to need to get stuff. You know, yeah. you, got to, you got to let it go. You got you need mm -hmm. to get lighter in life and you don't need stuff. You just. Yeah. yeah. Such a metaphor, isn't it? Get lighter. Yeah. It just makes you feel heavier having all that stuff. It's just, yeah, just, I mean, I know it's grounding, but it just makes you feel heavier. Yeah. And yeah. So that was part of my lesson going out to California was learning how to be lighter. Yeah. I have always been a collector. Like yeah. since I was a little kid, I liked to go to the garage sales. And then, you know, as I got older, I had antique stores or antique booths or whatever. And um, it's a lot of stuff and yeah. it can get really heavy. So, yeah, I have tried to get be getting rid of things, but I still like a sparkle. <laughs> a sparkle. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I like a sparkle when I'm when I'm traveling or going anywhere. I like to buy something pretty. Um, but, but you can't buy small. You don't have to buy big. Right. Yeah. And I don't. Hi, Nancy Jean. How are you? Good to see you here. Yeah. Speaking of crystals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Dr. Gal only needs her crystals, Rossi says. That's yeah. right. That's right. But crystals are my pets. Oh, yeah. Oh, hi, medium Betsy Palmer. How are you? Aloha, my friend. Um. So, in your light. So it's like, um, I really feel that when we're go moving on, like, I guess we kind of started talking about this because I was talking about letting go of things and how much sludge is coming up. Right. The last couple of weeks for my subscribers, for me, my friends, my family, I feel like all of us have kind of been getting rid of stuff. And, and that includes like old ways, right? And old limited belief systems. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we might have hung on to. But um, as we get rid of all that stuff, I don't know where I was going with that. I was going into something really smart, you guys. <laughs> but, but anyway, getting rid of that and lightening up. Because um, <clears throat> there is going to be a new wave coming in. Right. And new things coming in. Oh, yeah, that's where I was going to go with the economy, because oh. all of a sudden we had a rotten week for the markets, right? And we had a, a kind of a really tumultuous week coming in politically as well. Yeah, it has been very heavy, the energy. So um, I'm getting rid of all that old stuff and, and trying to lighten it up. And I was thinking about the energy and I was like, wow, I lost a lot of money this week. But then I thought I made a lot of money last month and I thought it's only energy. That's yeah. all it is. You just have to look at it like energy because it's like, it's just in movement and, and you just have to jump in it and work with it. Right. And, and it's getting that attitude about it and not being tied to it and just kind of jumping in with it and moving it around a bit. But, um, you know, it, it's hard when you grow up, um, not necessarily with, well, you know, kind of with a scarcity. Mm -hmm. um, well, our parents came from scarcity. Yeah, 100% from, you know, the Depression or mm -hmm. the Holocaust or wars. And yeah, so it is hard s sometimes to feel that way, but but it is just energy. And yeah, look at any of those people that have made so much. It's only cash when you spend it, right, Sally? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but I also wanted to talk a little bit, and you guys, we're going to take uh, questions. So if you have any questions about anything, whether it's, um, we're not doing political, but we're doing like um, star beings or galactic, or we'll do energy or something like that. But um, 
I feel like there's a lot of tree energy coming in right now and we're working with the trees right now. Um, they really show me the root system and how it goes down into the depths of the waters and reaches uh, Mother Earth, Gaia, the divine feminine, and pulling all that energy back up into the trunk and seeing those rings of time and how everything is just energy and it's always in rotation and to keep it moving and then reaching up into the branches and um, kind of reaching out to Father Sky and being collected with him and um, and then bringing that back in and how we are the root people, like we are the, the trunk people that are, are walking um, connected both ways. So, oh, I want to ask you a question, Terry, about that, because I've okay. always been really connected with the trees. But when I first started meeting the um, elementals, it was the gnomes that I met first and they were in the trees. Yeah. And so that's how I, I mean, I had always been, I've always been connected to the, the trees, but the gnomes um, were in the trees when I met them. And I always see them still in the trees yeah. um, when I meet them. So I don't know if there's something to that or do you know anything about that? Or have you seen the gnomes because you're connected to the trees? Yeah, I have seen them. And it's like, um, I feel like the um, the tree trunk is almost like um, Superman's uh, uh, phone booth where you can <laughs> go in. I mean, it's like me when going into the Akashic Records. I go, I'll walk into a tree. And it <laughs> it's 100% like walking into the Akashic Records. It's like yeah. you can fall into it. Yeah. And, um, and, and you can come out either side you want. Like if you want to come out inside the earth or if you want to come go up into space, you know, it's, um, it's whatever you want, but you can also go through the rings of time. So it can be a really healing place because that tree trunk has all those rings inside it. And um, so you can go back and, and heal ancestral things there. And you can also go into the center, but, um, but the gnomes, yeah, there's a lot of energy in there. There's a lot of gnome energy. There's a lot of elementals in there. And, um, and it's interesting how many different types of entities are in there. Wow, Annie Vera, Brownie flew right by you yesterday, zoomed right by, right to the left. Wow. Yeah. 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 Lots of water fairies, right? Suncatcher. Yeah. That's what really are. We're working with more on the East Coast as the water beings. Um, that's what I'm expecting to running into more. Yeah. They're beautiful. Uh, the sprites and what what are the water people? What are the water little water ones? Well, there's, there's the water fairies. There's also um, a lot. I mean, there's any number of different types, but there's um, the mer people, of course, yep. are there. And then the, the fish are magical that are in there. And the little amoebas are magical. Some there's some the ones that are out of the water. Oh, that are out of the water. Um, yeah, but they're water related. Huh. Somebody but, else here might, oh, you call them sprites, Annie Bear. Yes, yeah, sprites. Sprites. The sprites. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I think this film I'd be working with here on the East Coast is the Sprites, which I haven't met yet, yet but I think, for some reason, I don't know why, I think they're calling me. I mean, I think they're waiting on me to get here. Wow. Well, that's uh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. I can see you doing that. I can well, see no. your veil right now. <laughs> well, the whales have called me, too, back to the East Coast, so I know I'm going to be working with them, and I've worked with them before. But also, I think it's the sprites that are calling me too. That I'll be working with them. Wow, wow, yeah, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Rossi's saying the nymphs, and yeah, nymphs too. Yeah, wow, that sounds amazing. Well, y'all, if anybody's got uh, questions, we're happy to answer them. So, um, Susie, if you've got any questions back there, or okay, Sharon, hi, Sharon. Uh, me too. I was told I'll never have or be anything. We know it's not true, but it's been spoken over and over to you. Yeah, I will ever realize who I am in the galactic sense. Will you ever realize who you oh, are? Really? I think you already do. I, mean, I think right here, being here, you realize you're more than who you are. Yeah, I'm getting a yes. I'm getting a huge yes on that. And I'm also getting the feeling um, you already know you're more than 
what you've been told and you're you were you're breaking out of that um and it might need i don't know if you're working on some shadow work sharing but you're needing to break away from all whatever has been holding you back because um you know you're bigger than what you've been told and you need and i'm just see, seeing you just breaking through it like breaking through all that stuff like you're coming out of it just get off of me get off of me and i just think that's um yeah you're bigger than who you are and you might just need to do a little work with the shaman and kind of get rid of those things that you've been told and know that you, and you know it's not true so i think that a little work with that will help yeah i feel like um some of the entities that told you that are are kind of with you now they're um they've they've wisened up they're on the other side and they realize that was nonsense um and and i feel like they're there kind of supporting you right now and so i pulled you a couple of cards and i got the squirrel spirit so this is all about believing in yourself and taking care of yourself and look at all your acorns so you are rich <laughs> um and the nightingale spirit um to see the love around the world so, but um, Sharon, yeah, you are on your way. I kind of see you inside that tree trunk um, and those circles of time and, and that you're healing that ancestral shadow. So, yeah. Um, Sharon's oh. saying, yes, but who? Um, let's see me tell us. I, I'm not sure who, who you're talking about. Who's Sharon? I think she's talking about who I said I saw around her, oh. um, her guides that have been there. Um, I'm seeing a man and a woman, um, Sharon, they have dark hair. They have dark hair now. They may not have when they were here. They may have had wh white hair when you knew them. Um, they're kind of dressed in a little bit in like 1920s uh, type of uh, clothing. But um, it, it feels like they had a really hard life. And now they're, um, now they're happy. They're like, they have joy. So, yeah. I, I, this is really strange, Sharon, but I'm seeing a horse around you. And I'm not mm -hmm. sure why you have a horse around you, but you do. And I'm getting a big yes on that. And this is the first time I've seen somebody who has a horse. I don't know if you're connected with the horse or <laughs> if it's like a power animal. I'm getting it's a power animal. Um, yeah, I'm getting a big power animal. Um, which is, um, I'm not sure why this horse is so prominent right now, but, um, it is very in your life. And, um, and I think maybe it is showing me that you do need, or I think it's also, it's affirming that you need to work with a shaman, um, getting rid of some of these things. And one of your power animals that's waiting for you, is the horse, it, this would have to go, I would have to go a lot more into this, but I think. Um, I don't know if you have a shaman in your area or if you need, um, I can give you information on two that you can contact to work with um, at um, Dr. Gail Starseed at gmail.com. I can give you the name of a couple, but um, I believe this horse is your power animal. So, and I think that's, they're just showing me that because they're giving me a um, um, validating that that's what you need to be doing. Yeah, I, I do feel like it's your um, Native American uh, family that's that's coming forward. And um, it's the dark hair and then the whole. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And the, um, the horse comes through because the horse is such a work animal. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and they're they're bringing in that new energy to you. Like they've carried all this stuff for so long. And now they're carrying you into a new space. So. Beautiful energy. I love horse energy because I can always feel him hugging up on you with, you know, <laughs> leaning into you with that big old head, a couple thousand pounds leaning I on know, you. I know, you know, um, uh, chiropractically, you know, I, I did um, adjust animals and um, the horses were just so, I don't know, they, as you said, they hug up against you, especially when you're um, adjusting them, they feel so much better. They're just lean their little weight on their little weight they're a lot of weight on you, <laughs> you know? and uh say so, um yeah they are they were they were always um very grateful, yeah. grateful 
animals. So yeah. Yeah, they are. They have such beautiful energy. I love horse energy. Yeah. Yeah. She's been feeling that. She says, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, hypnicity. I love this. I feel that the rocks are trying to tell me something and includes what it is. Oh, God, those rock people are busy right now. <laughs> you, you've, been, you've been dealing with the rock people for a lot lately. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had my elemental cards. I only have brought out two sets of cards, and um, I'm going to, I'm pulling out Martian, is which they're pointing to me about. Um, and I'm not sure because I'm dealing with the rock people, but I'm pulling out a card for that. And um, you're showing me the Ebens, and it, it says mystery, uh, it's even card, and it says mystery, reading between the lines, intuition. So I think that's the message that we're talking about is um, the rock people, it, it's the most, they're mysterious, and they want you to read between the lines and um, use your intuition on the information they're giving you. And what I'm, uh, and to me, what they're showing me is that the information coming in it looks a little muffled to you. You're not really understanding what they're talking about. Um, and so they're wanting you to slow down, pay attention and use your intuition, not exactly what you're hearing, but more feeling what they're saying or feeling what's coming in, feeling the energy that's coming in more than um, maybe words in your head, thinking about what it is. Um, they're wanting to use your intuition. Um, <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. Um, she says she hears rumbling almost constantly. Okay. Yeah, I hear Tyler almost constantly. So, <laughs> mine, mine keep, I'm, I'm sitting in a hotel room and my computer's on a trash can and <laughs> sitting on the bed, and my dog's right behind it, and she's having the the barking dreams, and she keeps kicking the trash can. I'm if it goes flying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, th things are shifting right now for you, hypnicity. That's why they're talking about looking between things because that there's a, like a dance going on with them and, and it's an upward movement. So, and I know hypnicity just had like um, mushy eyebrow, right? She had a big opening in her third eye. So, um, so it's like all this rumbling is happening because things are shifting. So um, beautiful energy coming in for you right now, hypnicity. It's going to be amazing. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, Suncatcher, does my ET family have a message for me? Suncatcher. Okay, All right, let's see what we have here. I'm already pulling out of my um, first seed oracle deck. Suncatcher. Forge, oh, forge, don't follow. Wow. Very hard. Um, pave a new path. Be the leader you wish you had. Now, I, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I pulled this for myself, actually. Because so I'm, <laughs> I'm always looking for somebody who's doing the same thing I'm doing. And, and I have, have not found it in the, all these years. Um, so I think this is basically telling you quit looking for the person to follow you're the one to forge ahead don't follow create your new path be the leader you wish you had and wow. uh, i'm always thinking this card is for me because i'm always looking for a leader and actually it's me <laughs> has to be the leader and this is for you also sun catcher um quit looking for the person you are the leader yeah, I heard um, somebody talking about finding your guru once, and they said, um, how do you spell guru? G, you are you. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. <laughs> I thought that was perfect. I was like, yeah. okay, that's classic. <laughs> yeah. That's so classic. Um, so I get the chamber of the karmic, or the um, violet flame, rather. Um, so you've got a big shift coming on. Again, another big shift, um, and it's karmic release, radical transformation. So and I love the purple in that because I liked all the purple yeah. in yours too, that violet flame. But, yeah, 
You see my computer shaking. My dog is dreaming and she keeps kicking the trash can. <laughs> I love puppy dog dreams when they shake and they start she talking. Out. She is out, out, out. Both of mine are. Everybody's tired. <laughs> oh, oh, how beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Sally. I just got a new camera that records all night. I caught a falling star and see some lights in the sky. So can you describe what galactic ship movement looks like? Thank you. Dr. Oh, Gale. Wow. Um, I don't even know how to answer that, Sally. I, what, um, I don't see the movement of the ships. I actually see the ships themselves um, and how they move. And they do move differently than um, a plane. But... I can just, I can only go by my experience and I can't give you a blanket of this is what they're all going to look like because the first time I saw spaceships, I went out on my back deck about two o'clock in the morning. I don't know why. And I could see all these bright lights coming and going from the moon. almost looked like fireflies. And I kept blinking my eyes going, what am I seeing? And I went back in and got my glasses just to make sure I was going, what is all that? Well, it turns out it was little spaceships coming and going from the moon. And there was no clouds in the sky and the spaceships were being were reflecting the light of the moon coming and going. And then the um, next spaceship I saw was one of the cigar kind. And um, it came around the sun at an odd way and came around. Um, but I could see the um, cigar shape of it and it moved differently than anything. And you couldn't hear it and didn't have any kind of trail. Um, and um, so I, there's just, and of course, when I went to Mount Shasta, <laughs> a spaceship every night, you know, <laughs> so just name it. Um, but I don't know how to, when you're looking at a camera, how to see it, because I've always actually seen the spaceship, not the actual movement of it. And I would say the biggest distinguishing thing is they does not have a trail like a regular airplane or a jet or whatever it has that white trail behind them spaceships don't so um and so I, i'm a, i don't think that answers it but i just can't give you a blanket answer over that i wish i could but i can't yeah that's, how about you Terry? do you have an answer for that well the ones that i've seen i've seen in visions or dreams i haven't seen them with my eyes but they've shown me um like the different circles on either end kind of and then the ship itself in between. So I guess that's kind of like a hot dog with circles. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that sounds you know. like one of the party boats. No. Oh, there you go. There you go. It's a party boat. Yeah. And um, so they've shown me those and they've shown me the smaller ones. And then sometimes I know when uh, Dr. Gale is going by yeah. saying good morning because <laughs> she's coming home. So I can, I can feel your energy as you go by, but um, anyway. Yeah, it's they all look like something different. Um, yeah, because even my very first one that we're, um, um, oil painter has done a picture of it um, for me is it looks like a little ball, uh, um, crystal ball in the front where we all sit, and the back part of it is like a triangle and it's metal. And um, I've not seen anything else like that out there. And that was my very first spaceship that was in my backyard that I saw. Um, so I, d I just can't give a I wish I could, but yeah. I, can't, I can't quite answer that like I think you won't, Sally. I'm sorry, I can't. She says, I see an orb that moves kind of fast through the camera field, like it's tracing the curve of the Earth. Well, that could I, be a orb because um, I found out that we are in those orbs, but they were calling it a pod, and that was that single engine pod that was like a spaceship that found out that we are actually in or i guess our higher beings or people checking on us um so those do look like orbs but actually they are uh, they were calling a pod because i was calling everything else but they said it's a pod this is a pod it's a pod like yeah. on the station that was a pod this, this. <laughs> so anyway um so the orbs to me um my experience is actually an orb so um but they kept telling me it was called a pod that's what they call it but anyway, that's, that was my experience of the orb. So that orb could be a spaceship or it could be a pod. It could be any of those. 
Now, I've also heard that there are uh, giant ships that just kind of station over cities sometimes. Oh, yeah. There's there. Yes. Not sometimes. Yeah. They're up there. Some big yeah. ones, especially the hospital ones. Like our Athena, which is the one that can hold up to a million people, is up yeah. there. On, um, and it's stationed you know, off on the medical part. When we, they split, the medical part stays over Mount Shasta and the um, military part goes to Huntsville, Alabama, where it it gets um, their orders or where they're connected to. But I've heard that there's a spaceship that's headed our way very slowly. That's about 200 miles wide that yeah. will be coming here this year. I think it's going to arrive this year. I'm not sure if that's going to be our big thing that's going to happen this year, but I know there's one that's headed this way that is like 200 miles long. Um, and that will be something that, we can't not see or miss or whatever. It's so big. Yeah. I've, I've seen inside some of them, um, not the 200 mile ones, but, um, but the libraries and whatnot, it's, it's really something it's, it's intriguing. Well, yeah, you know, the first ship I was on, uh, <laughs> that very first one, they had a library when we, I went in the room and um, there's a library there and it was real books, but the books were so old. I didn't want to touch them because yeah you know, they're not using books anymore and they look like manuals and I, and I, and, and the being that I was with, I was not more comfortable with him. So I didn't want to touch anything, do anything. I was just thinking about get me out of here. Please don't let me touch this books and break them. Cause I thought if I even touched them, it was just, they were going to just go to dust. <laughs> so, and I'm not sure why they even had them. Um, those books, or I kind of felt like there were manuals, um, those old manuals. Yeah. Wow. Um, Susie says from Sat Saturn's rings. Oh, from Saturn's rings. What the, space oh, the spaceship is from Saturn's rings. Okay, oh, the spaceship okay. is coming from Sat. Is that Saturn's rings now? Is that what you're she's saying? Is that what I she's think saying? So. She's going this. <laughs> oh, okay, I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of Streamyard. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Spirit Detective, does my galactic family have a message for me? Thank you. Okay. Let's see here. Spirit Detective, do you have an idea about something? It's like, it's right over here on your left side. I think that's your creative side, isn't that? Of the brain? <laughs> Birth and creation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You got something. You got something cooking there, the young lady. Yes, yes that's what it is. Um, this is the Seven Sisters, and it says birth and creation. Um, it is tapestry of life expression. So whatever you're creating, um, you're birthing that creation. You're going to be expressing it. <laughs> yeah, it it looks pretty exciting. Um, and then you get an Earth Star activation. So something you're bringing to Earth, something you're birthing. So you're bringing it into this dimension. <laughs> there you go, spirit detective. <laughs> okay, Bogo Pogo. Question: With this new healing modality that I've come in, that's come in, I've now met two different Syrian representatives while channeling. One male and one female. Are either of them a new guide for me? Um. I, I'm, gonna, I'm immediately getting that um, I have a special guide that is for medical. He is not exactly a guide. He's an assistant. He's called Medical Mike. And I'm think, thinking this is what these people are. They're just for the medical part. And they're getting a huge yes for that. So they're, they're not like your classic guides that you're thinking about a guide that you're going to be asking questions for. They're strictly on them. And I'm getting a huge yes on this. They're strictly for your medical part, the medical or your spiritual healing part, um, that's what they are for. Um, so, and it's nice to have them. Yeah. She asks if either of them have a name. Okay. Anna is the female's name. <laughs> and the guy wants to be called Army. <laughs> Army? Army? Army. Yeah. Anna. Yeah. Anna and Army is, is wow. what they're names are so I love that <laughs> yeah. but they oh and he's saying um what he's saying is 
yes, we are bringing in an army to help you with your healing practice. That's what he's, that's where he got the name. That's why he chose the name army. Yeah. It feels like their energy is so interconnected too. Yeah. Like they kind of are, are almost right up against each other when they come in their energy. Yeah. 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 Really cool. Foco Boca. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Willow love energy reading are my connections. I'm not aware of please. Oh, okay, you want to know who you're connected to, or do you know who your um um spirit guides are or anything? Is that what you're asking, Willow? Or you're asking for more details than that? Do you know who anybody who your guides are at all? Are you here, Willow? <laughs> I saw her earlier, um, and and she's. She's a, a member of the meditation tribe. She does a lot of um, meditative work and we work a lot with our guides. Um, so she knows who they are. I don't know if she knows. Oh, here she is. She's got a smile face there. Do you know who they are, Willow? Or do you have any names or like? Yeah. Do you, do you know? them? Yeah. So I want to know if you're actually asking who mm -hmm. your guides are. Oh, she says she knows the majority of her guides. Okay, so um, the energy reading or my connections that you're not aware of. I'm not exactly sure how to go with that question then. Do you, Terry? Um, connection. I, I think connections that she's not aware of might be towards uh, different um, star beings or different... Um, Oh, you don't know about galactic well, guides. Okay, yeah. that, that helps because I yeah. just I, I just wasn't feeling that you didn't know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, okay, so you wanted to know if you have any galactic like guides connected for sure. Okay. okay. All right. Let me first find out. So, yeah, a lot of a big part of our job is getting the correct question. So, because um, if we don't get the correct question, we don't get the correct answer. So, do you have any galactic guides? And I'm getting a huge yes on that. We do have galactic guides. Well, there's Dirty Harriet. She came out from under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zeppelin's just raising his head, too. So he's <laughs> back there on the bed. I don't know if you can see yeah. it. Yeah, there he is, right there. <laughs> Sitting up. Well, she's now thinking I'm not going to put her in the carrier. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're not going anywhere. We're staying. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so you do have galactic gods. And let me see if I can get into who they are because I'm thinking there's more than one of them there. Um, Cause I'm seeing, I'm seeing a blue one, which isn't, which I, I'm, he's saying I'm a Syrian. I'm going to say you're not Turian, but he's saying, no, I'm Syrian. Um, so he's blue, but he's a Syrian and he's a, and he's a water being. Let me see if he's a water being. And I think that's going to be your main ET God. And he's going, yes. Um, oh, I don't know. She wants to play with the computer cord. <laughs> okay, it is a Syrian. He is a water person. Sirius B is where he's from. Oh, gosh. I don't know if I can say this name. Oh. Okay, let's go with the first name. <laughs> I know this was impossible. It almost looked like I don't, I don't even know. It almost looked like it started off like algorithm. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was crazy. And let's see, let me see what he's going to choose as Earth name. <laughs> Scallion. <laughs> okay, he's going to choose the name Scallion as his Earth name, and wow. it, and his his Syrian name. I, I don't. I don't even want to go there. Um, that that was too hard. So um, there are other ones also, but he's the main one, and he's the one that has stepped forward to say who he is. And um, it looks like to me you're extremely connected. We're serious, B. Um, maybe I'm not sure if you're a water person, but you are um, connected with. Oh gosh, I'm going to be huge on this. You are connected with the water, and it looks like to me the water is where you get your energy from. So. Um, 
There you go. <laughs> you have, Terry. Wow. I, I just get so much reinforcement about that because when you were talking about it, I know Willow's getting ready to make a big change in how she lives and um, where she's going to. And it's um, I just that water is like you're just in the flow right now, Willow. It's just beautiful. I hope she's moving towards water. Yeah. I hope so too. I, I, I'm not sure if she's aware of that yet, but she's aware that she's moving. I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, she doesn't have to move towards like the beach or anything. It's just, that she, and actually I'm seeing more lake water kind of thing for her. Um, but it looks like to me that she's just real connected with water. Oh, she said, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. That's beautiful. Willow. Thank you. Um, Mary, hi, Terry and Dr. Gal. I'd like to know your impression for my star family groups. I think more than one. Thanks. Okay. You think you have more than one star family group, star family? Okay. Let me see. Well, that is a yes. And I, I see that you're connected with the grays. And I get a big yes on that. I don't know if y'all can hear Dirty Harry eating with her coffee. <laughs> Traveling with pets keeps on going. Yep. Okay, so it's the grays. There are more than that, but it looks like to me the grays are most prominent right now that they're saying you're working with them right now. You're working with the grays. You're actively working with the grays. And um, so there, there are others, but it's almost, and they're showing me that they, they deal with rotation. Like, okay, it's this turn, it's this turn, but right now it's the gray's turn that you are working with. Yeah, it's, um, that's funny. You're talking about the rotation and, and that's kind of what I'm getting here too. So um, you're, you're like a grid worker. You've been um, at this for a while, Mary, and your star family is, is there on that grid and you've been helping. You're the light worker. Um, I, I would have to go with Dr. Gale if she says grace, um, but it's, it's definitely a lot of light around it. Yeah. So beautiful energy. Lottie B. Would love an energy reading. Thank you. I like that. Lottie B hugs from the spirit. Hugs from spirit. Yeah, she's got a new channel. She's really oh, great. Hey, what's yeah. her channel about? Um, Lottie's a light worker. Um, and and Lottie, she says hi. I'm here. Um, so what's your channel about Lottie? Put it in for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Put it in. <laughs> there's a and then thank you because there's so many readers here. There's so many people with yeah. channels here. We really appreciate it. Annie Bear, um, Viviani. Uh, I saw um, so many people here today. She plays the piano and is learning to read tarot and oracle. Okay, and so your channel is Lottie. Is it about playing the piano, or what is your channel about? Or is it about all of that? I think it's about all of that. <laughs> I've got, you got the love. So you got the love all around you. It's the Hadarian energy, codependency. But what they're saying, figure out your boundaries. You've got the love. You're putting it all out there. But you've got to create some boundaries. Do not drain yourself. It looks like to me they're saying you're putting your energy out there. You're not replacing it because you're putting so much of it out there that you've got to create some boundaries so that you can replenish yourself. And that, that's a lot. That's so true of all of us on YouTube. Um, yeah. That we put so much energy. And a lot of us, when we go out on shows and things, put out so much energy, we don't think about. Oh, wait, I've got to sit back and rest and replace that energy. You go on to the next thing or you go to a session or you're, you, you, you don't take that time to think about how much energy you put out there into the world and you need to sit back and replace it every time that you do something like that. Yeah. She says, yeah, she does feel tired. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, 
it's um, also we need to look at rewarding ourselves. Like um, that, that gives me a little peep of energy if I think, oh man, I did a great job. So I'm going to go buy myself a coffee. So <laughs> that's what I did this morning because I, I went and led a meditation at the yoga studio. And it was like, oh, I get a coffee for that. So just <laughs> remember to give yourself little things throughout the day or a big thing if you want to. Um, I get third eye activation. Um, Lottie, the more you're doing this, the more all your gifts are going to come in. It's just going to be really connecting for you. Uh, brow chakra, inner vision, clear seeing. So as that third eye activation comes in, um, again, lots of boundaries. You know, keep all your 33 trillion angels around you. Yeah. So well, I'm getting more that she's needs the boundaries of quit putting so much of her energy out there. And yeah. Bring it back to her is what I'm getting is that she's putting mm -hmm. more out and she's bringing it back in. Beautiful. All right. Last mm -hmm. question. Cheryl, I am trying to make changes in my <gasps> life, <laughs> letting go of actual things and old mindsets. Any suggestions for my galactic family? Thanks, ladies. I'm reading it again. That's a great question, Cheryl. How are you trying to make changes in your life and how to let go? Huh. Hmm. I don't know, Cheryl. Are you um are you um doing journeying? Have you learned how to do journeys? Where you go in with the intention of a meditation on a journey on that you want to let go of? Um whenever you set out the intention for me, when there's something I'm needing to let go of. And I was taught by Shaman how to do this, take the journey with an intention. And I have to go in and, and you don't do it for more than um, 20 minutes um, every day. But it takes me probably sometimes six or seven of those sessions to get through the issue, to find out the root cause of the issue and then to take care of it. Um, and it's actually taken me up to 10 times to do it. I don't know if you know how to do that, Cheryl, but you don't know how to do journeys. Okay, well, then um, a shaman can help you with that to teach you how to do a journey yourself or um, somebody who's actually doing the medicine wheel or you can do the start taking the medicine wheel yourself to learn how to journey. But that teach I was taught by a shaman how to journey. She kept saying, you don't need to take the classes in shaman. <laughs> I can teach you all you know in like 30 minutes. And um, so she taught me how to journey and it was a big help to um, whenever you have an issue that keeps popping up to take that journey and try to figure out what the root cause was, what was, and it's usually a past life. I mean, mine have always been a past life that I have to go back to, to get, um, take, to get, um, get it rid of. And you learn your power animals, animals that keep you safe while you're going through this. And so there's a whole, um, process to the whole thing. And, um, the lady that helped me, she even sent me a whole, um, paperwork on how to go through the journey um, that she has written down or got through a book. And it, it was hard at first to start doing it, but it really did help me work through a lot of issues. So I would suggest here, you can contact me um, and I will get you the name of, the, of two shamans. Or if you know a shaman that can just teach you how to do a journey. And, that, and also it's a safety thing to start journeying with them because you don't really know how to do it. So you, if you journey with them and they teach you how to do it, then you can go on your own and do your own journeys. But you do, I like the safety of having somebody with me um, when I'm doing something like that in the beginning. So, um, but I'm, I'm, everybody's not like me. So you might, you might feel secure enough to do it on your own. But for me, I like to have, I like that help in the beginning to help somebody help me walk through it. Yeah. Yeah. There is, um, you know, there's something that we've been doing too, that they showed me about going back in time and being able to, um, uh, find that time that something happened either in, um, your genealogy, you know, your ancestors, or perhaps it happened, uh, when you were three or maybe it happened last week and reversing that, but, but not reversing what happened, but bringing in, um, I bring in a counselor, like I always bring in a therapist. <laughs> and I say, okay, I want therapy for what happened. And then I want therapy for the person who did it. <laughs> well, and, you know, 
Well, well, I don't know what I do because the, one of the most shocking ones I saw was me being, I was probably about early 20s and a dinosaur had me by their tail and they were shaking me up and down. And you know, I'm going, hey, do I forget this dinosaur for killing me or what? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's that was a lot. I was sitting, going, sitting back going, holy crap, look at me. I'm just bouncing up and down. Oh my God. That is, that is so um, Wilma Flintstone, right? Yeah. <laughs> I am bam. Um, and um, the other thing is too, like uh, a lot of times we've been talking about um, that uh, all this heavy stuff is coming in. Well, when you feel that and you feel, Oh man, I feel a real sense of scarcity. Where have I felt that before in my life? Mm -hmm. And, and look back in time, like did something happen with your parents and then look back again so did it happen when you were a little kid, you know, and you couldn't have a quarter or what was probably a nickel or whatever, I don't know, <laughs> to get a candy bar, right? Yeah. So go back and see when did that happen and, and kind of just recognize that and give it space. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, guys, I'm sorry we didn't get to all the questions, but I do want to thank all the people that are in the chat. And Terry, thanks for coming and helping us today. And Susie, thanks for all your help. Yeah, Susie. Thank you. <laughs> it's always a big help. So anyway, um, when it what's up next for you, Terry? Um, golly gee, golly gee. I'm not sure. I, I think Monday. I'm I think Monday, uh, Nancy Jean and I are gonna be doing something. Okay. And um and uh actually I'm gonna have um Gerald at Tarot Stash on. Uh-huh. And we do historical mediumship once a month. And we go in and we um, bring out somebody from history. Maybe we'll bring out that dinosaur. So. Yeah, there you go. Bring out my dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> why were you give, Why were you killing her, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. T Rex? We'd like to know today. <laughs> yes. And uh, so, anyway, thanks everybody. And my next show, I think, is Susie's at Wednesday. She's <laughs> looking, looking at us at Wednesday. That my next show. Um, I think it is, but um, yeah, it is. It's next Wednesday that I'll be doing next show. Hopefully I'll be in my next temporary residence for a while at that time, a little more settled and not in a hotel and my animals will be settled. But anyway, all right. Thanks everybody for joining us and we'll see y'all later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye everybody. <laughs>